Let's look at an explicit problem from the homework on page 907. This is number 15. A uh, good problem about the multivariable chain rule. It's what I'd call a half abstract problem. Um, part of it is given by explicit formulas, and then part of it is given by a function f, which we're never given a formula for, but we're given information about its values and its derivatives. Um, and it's a very good one for understanding the chain rule. So f is just assumed to be differentiable everywhere. And g is defined as f composed with some functions, where you don't just put in u and v directly into f, but you put some explicit functions of u and v in there. Okay, We know uh, this table of values and derivatives. We'll see how that's useful in a second. And we want to calculate the partial derivative of g with respect to u at the origin and with respect to v at the origin. Okay, So one thing, this is kind of a crutch for the first, I don't know, 10, 100 times you do the chain rule, something like that. Um, and it's not something you absolutely have to do, but we like to draw the tree, and it's nice to have, um, when you draw that tree, it's nice to put, sometimes you need to put in extra letters that aren't given in the problem to kind of complete the tree in case you want to name stuff. So I'm gonna, it's a little bit overdone what I'm gonna, gonna do here, but it's, it's, it's a good idea to be able to do it. So they've got a function f of x and y. Okay, so here's the function f of x and y. They never gave a name for the output of f. Well, z is definitely available, so I made z be the output of that guy. Okay, now x is supposed is the name for the first slot of f that we're using here. And notice what's being put in in the x slot. It's a function of u and v. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's see down here, um, that x. I'm going to name the, that function h of u and v in case I want to give it a name. Not incredibly necessary, but it's good to have it. And that's just a, a name for e to the u plus sine v. Okay? And so h is this guy. That's how u and v make x, and then x is going in the first slot of f to make z. Similarly, let's take this e to the u plus cosine v, which is up here in the second slot. That's going to be into the y slot. So y is equal to e to the u plus cosine v. If we happen to want a name for it, we can call it k. Okay? And so z is going to be the output of f of x, y, but what we're thinking of is that x and y are themselves are functions of these variables u and v. So x and y are intermediate variables, u and v are the actual independent variables, and z is the final answer. Okay. And g is, um, and so this is, is g of u, v. So g is a function of u and v that's created by putting f, h, and k together in terms of function language. In terms of variable language, the variables u and v control and affect the variables x and y, which control uh, the variable z. Okay, so let's write down the multivariable chain rule. Okay, we want uh, partial z partial uh, u. Okay, that is going to be the same thing as g sub u, because g sub, relates the, the z to the u and v. And the sub u is just partial z partial u. I usually write it out with the, this notation, the the round denotation, um, because it looks more like sort of fractions canceling, things like that. Okay, now, really important, that is evaluated. Let's see, I need this and this. That's evaluated at, we could put 0, 0, but I want to be really explicit about what variables are which. That's where u, v or 0, 0. Okay, you often don't put this kind of stuff explicitly, but when you're first doing it, or if you're at all confused, it's really important. That makes notice if you looked at the videos on like implicit multivariable and total versus partial, that's really crucial stuff. Okay, so um, okay, so let's write down the multivariable chain rule. You just write down uh, it's the sensitivity of each of the output to each of its inputs, and I'll I'll put in the evaluation bars in a second. Okay, times the actual change of that particular input, that particular intermediary, to whoops, to the variable that you're actually varying. Okay, plus, and you sum over all the possible channels of influence. So this is z v. This is uh, v. Uh, no, sorry, this is y. I too many things at once here, and this is u. Okay, now let's think about where everything's going to be evaluated. Well, dx du, that's a function directly of u. Okay, and so we're going to be evaluating that at uv equals 0, 0. Okay, which we could just abbreviate to 0, 0, but again, I'm being really trying to be careful. Okay, now what about this one? This guy, 
Now that, I need to tell you what x and y are, because dz dx, that goes by the, the function name, it, that goes by f sub x. dz dx is how, how the output of f depends on its, its natural first input, that's f sub x. Okay, so this, the f sub x, expects x and y to come in. It doesn't know anything about u and v, because that's only when we create, combined f with these other things to create the big function g. So, I need to tell you what the x and y are. That's not 0, 0. x and y are not the same as u and v, and x and y are affected by u and v, and I can calculate those, but I need to figure out what the corresponding xy pair is for u and v equals 0, 0. Well, that's not too hard, because we have explicit functions, okay? If u and v are 0, comma 0, this gives you 1 plus 0 is 1. This gives you 1 plus 1 is 2. Hey, that's why they gave us this information, okay? So this is going to be at 1, 2. Okay, so actually, you know, it's going to be quicker if I actually just recopy this and then just change everything to these guys are just Y's. Okay, so that's written out in the, the Leibniz notation with the, uh, the round D's. Um, if we want to write that out in terms of FX and FY's, this would be FX. Let's write it out. That's FX of 1, 2. It's a more compact notation. Um, this one, I'm just going to leave this way. Well, actually, no, I, let, let me see. I could write that as h sub u of 0, 0, plus, and then this is f sub y of 1, 2, and this is k sub u of 0, 0. They both work, okay? I think this one most people prefer, but this, this totally makes sense. In any case, fx of 1, 2 is 2, okay, that's 2, and I'm going to go ahead and just leave that there, okay? plus, and then I have to scroll up, sorry, fy of 1, 2 is 5, 5 times this guy. Okay, now those actually have to pull out of the derivatives. Okay, so let's actually calculate those. h sub u equals e to the u plus cosine. Oh, no, it's just e to the u. Sorry, just kidding. It's a partial derivative. Okay, and so h sub u of 0, 0 is just going to be 1. Okay, h sub v of 0, 0. Well, h sub v is going to be cosine v, and that's going to be 1 as well. Okay, and then here, k sub u, that should be a k, of 0, 0. Just take the derivative with respect to u again, that's e to the u, and that's 1 again. And k sub v, for further reference, that's for the next part of the problem is going to be, that's minus sine v, oh, that's just 0. Okay. So, it's this case, it's just going to be h sub u and k sub u are both 1, so it's just going to be 2 plus 5 equals 7. Okay. Now, again, I don't want you to imply that you have to pr produce all these letters, okay? Um, it's just that there's lots of ways to write it, and it's nice to be familiar with all the notation, and if you if you if your understanding just really is helped by naming these h and the k and the f and the z, then it's really nice to know how to do that. Okay, so um, let me just streamline it for the for the next one. Let me show how to just do this in the most streamlined fashion without referring to all the other stuff. Okay, g v of zero zero, um, or almost the most streamlined fashion. Okay, I don't I'm not just going to give the answer. Um, I get I think still this is really important. But then I'm just going to go ahead and um, write it out, okay? So uh, this is going to be a v now, okay? And dz dx, that's, uh, oh, no, that's right. Uh, dz dx is still 2, okay? And dx dv Okay, so dx dv, even without naming this h, it's just the derivative of this with respect to v, evaluated at 0, okay? And that's um, cosine of 0, which is 1. That's the h sub v here. Plus, and then dz dy, we know that's equal to, that's f sub y, evaluated at the right point. Just ignore those guys. Um, plus 5 times, and then the derivative of y with respect to v, is just this guy. Again, we don't have to write it out as k sub b if you don't want to. You're just taking the derivative of this expression with respect to v and plugging in 0. And so that's 0. Whoops, just kidding. 
put it here, and so that's equal to two. Okay. So one thing about this table: what were the what were the red herrings? And what was useful? Um, these guys were totally red herrings. We did not need to know f x f y at zero zero because that would be x equals zero and y equals zero. That's not the x and y values we're interested in. When u and v are zero zero, x and y are, are uh, one comma two. Okay. So um, what what do we, we did we actually use of this table? It's really just um, just these guys. Okay. Um, the values of f and g aren't really particularly important. Okay. What was important is that the one and two here, this couldn't have been any numbers. Those had to match the one and two um, that came out of the functions. That the h of zero zero was one and the k of zero zero was two. Those have to match. So they don't actually come into the numbers. Notice one and two were not really coming into this calculation, but the fact that the 0, 0 uv matched the x, y, 1, 2, that's really what's important.